Welcome to our video on the analysis and design of trusses, where we will explore different models to, to analyze trusses, such as pin-jointed frames, continuous cords, with pin-jointed internal members, and rigid frames. In this video, we'll cover everything from primary and secondary stresses to slenderness constraints and joint capacities. We'll also provide you with guidance on how to calculate member forces and moments and simplify loads to equivalent loads at the nodes. Moreover, we'll delve into the importance of joint geometry and joint capacities and how to modify them, taking into consideration the eccentricity limits and fabrication procedures. So, if you're looking to design an efficient and economical truss structure, then stay tuned as we take you through the step-by-step -step process of analyzing and designing trusses. Let's get started. Trusses can be analyzed using different models, including pin-jointed frames, continuous cords with pin-jointed internal members, and rigid frames. Pin-jointed frames and continuous cords with pin-jointed internal members are preferred as bending moments are usually not considered in joint capacity checks and connection design. However, secondary moments may be present due to factors such as changes in geometry as the truss deflects, the actual rigidity at the connection, and the stiffness of the members. To address these secondary stresses, design standards define when they can be ignored. Clause 4.1 states that secondary stresses may be insignificant if the slenderness of cord members in the plane of the truss is greater than 50 and that of most web members is greater than 100. An initial pin-jointed analysis and preliminary member sizing is therefore required to ensure that slenderness constraints can be achieved. If secondary stresses cannot be ignored, a rigid frame analysis will be required to determine the bending moments in the members and at the connections. Now, in most situations, it is reasonable and convenient to design connections in a manner consistent with the assumptions previously made in analysis and member design. However, in truss and lattice construction, the design of joints between cord and internal members often dominates member design with gap or overlap joints frequently used to increase joint capacity or improve fabrication details. This introduces eccentricity into element setting out, which must be considered in calculating member forces and moments. To calculate member forces and moments, certain types of connection have been well researched and guidance exists that defines when the moment due to eccentricity at nodes may be ignored for connection design and design of some truss members. When modeling truss, it's best to avoid connection details that involve complex cutting or extensive stiffening, as they significantly increase overall cost. Moreover, the use of an H section for the bottom cord should only be adopted if internal members can be satisfactorily connected. This is because difficult access for welding, size of gusset plate, and load transfer through the web should be considered. Changes in section size along the length of a cord are also best avoided unless a cost-effective, simple connection can be provided. In hollow section truss construction, joint capacities are improved with smaller cords with thicker walls and wider internal members. If cords are I sections with connections to the flanges, joint capacity is improved with thicker flanges and narrower internal members relative to the width of the flange. So, to obtain an efficient and economical structure, the analysis and design of a truss should be approached in the following sequence. First, determine the truss layout, span, depth, panel lengths, and lateral bracing by the usual methods but keep the number of connections to a minimum and maintain a minimum angle of 30 degrees between cords and internal members. Next, determine the loads and simplify them to equivalent loads at the nodes. After that, determine axial forces in all members by assuming that the joints are pinned and that all member center lines intersect at nodes. Then, determine preliminary member sizes and check if secondary stresses can be ignored. 
if secondary stresses cannot be ignored, reconfigure the truss or reanalyze the truss with rigid connections. Next, check the joint geometry and joint capacities. Modify the joint geometry with particular attention to the eccentricity limits. Consider the fabrication procedure when deciding on a joint layout. Finally, check the effect of primary moments on the design of the cord members using either the actual load positions or notional moments specified in the design standard. Have the effect of joint eccentricity where required by manual methods or by creating a new analysis model representing the actual setting out. To wrap things up, we have explored different models for analyzing trusses, including pin-jointed frames, continuous cores with pin-jointed internal members and rigid frames. We have covered primary and secondary stresses, slenderness constraints, joint capacities, and member forces and moments. We have also provided guidance on how to simplify loads, modify joint geometry, and check for the effect of primary moments on cord members. The main message is that designing an efficient and economical truss structure requires a step-by-step -step approach that involves determining the truss layout, loads, axial forces, and member sizes, as well as checking for secondary stresses, joint geometry, and primary moments. By keeping the number of connections to a minimum, maintaining a minimum angle of 30 degrees between cords and internal members, and considering the fabrication procedure when deciding on a joint layout, trust designers can achieve a safe and cost-effective structure. We hope this video has been helpful in understanding the analysis and design of trusses. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them below. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more informative videos on engineering and design. Thank you for watching.